Please welcome Dr. Amish Shaw, member of the Arizona House of Representatives. Long time no see. Yeah, <laughs> great to see you again. So, um, for all of you in the audience, um, we have here at the state of Arizona in the legislature the Bioscience and Healthcare Caucus. And that is where members of the legislature are able to look at various topics that they're interested in learning about, and then members of the community come in and, and share with them. And our, um, my co-panelist today is co-chair of the Arizona Bioscience and Healthcare Caucus and also wears a lot of different hats and does a lot of different things. So I'm gonna let him tell you a little bit about himself. <laughs> Thank you, Joan. Um, so my name is Misha. I am an emergency physician. I am still currently in practice. I'm at the Mayo Clinic. I'm also at the Dignity Hospitals. Uh, I, since getting into politics seven years ago, I've worked clinically throughout the time, including throughout the entire pandemic about one day a week now <laughs> because there's a lot of other stuff going on uh, that that I do so I've uh, I, I'll tell you a little bit about myself I'm from Chicago originally I went to Northwestern for undergrad and med school kind of moved around the country a little bit uh, I had an academic I practiced in academic settings I was at Mount Sinai on the Upper East Side of Manhattan I was a faculty member there I taught medical students and residents and did some you know, published some peer-reviewed research and stuff. I worked for the National Football League for a little while. I was with this organization called the New York Jets, and they were terrible, and it wasn't my fault. <laughs> and I used to, I was in that first cadre of physicians who stood on the 30-yard line right out of bounds in case something horrible happened. And part of my job was uh, to deal with that, but also we dealt with standardizing emergency care with all 32 teams across the league. So it was a great project. And they actually said, look, if you want to further your career, go get board certified and get a sports medicine fellowship. So I came to the U of A in 2012, board certified in sports medicine, fell in love with Arizona, decided not to go back to New York, and I've been practicing here ever since. So uh, clinically uh, independent practice, basically, for the last, uh, I don't know, how many years, 12 years. Um, but about seven years ago, started to feel like the system was not treating patients well. Politics itself was less than inspiring. And, and so it felt like somebody needed to step up in, in order to try to make a difference. And, and really, from purely from a sense of public service, I, I ran for office. So the way I did this was very unique and different. Um, I could have, I think, I make more money than the average bear, or I did at that time, not anymore. <laughs> so I could have just thrown marketing material at people and said, hey, I'm this doctor, you know, that's, that's great, vote for me. That's not what I wanted to do. I felt as though people were really disconnected and people didn't hear their stories. Like I heard the, the medical students that were just up here talking about making people feel as, as though they're, you're seeing the person. Well, what are we doing to the voter? Are we doing that to voters? Are we just sending marketing material and ads at them? So to that point, I personally cut back my practice to one day a week and I started knocking on doors and I knocked my first campaign for 18 straight months, five days a week, from 10 a.m. to sunset, 8,034 doors, not volunteers, me, and show up at these doors over and over again and um, build relationships with people, communicate with people, listen to what they actually had to say and give them opportunities to contact me. So I won my first election in a landslide, right? Everybody thought I was the dark horse and you know I'd never done anything in politics before, but crushed everybody in the race. And now I've gone on to win three in a row, right, which, which is great. Always with the same attitude. I've knocked on 15,000 doors personally, and I continue to knock. So I'm knocking almost every single day uh, out there. And then you're saying, well, when you get in there, what are you going to do? Well, instead of just, I, again, there, there's another style of politics where you can just get on social media or make pretty speeches and drone on and on, kind of like I'm doing now. Uh, but, but instead, I went on a door knocking campaign inside the Capitol. So every Democrat, every Republican, House and Senate, and I went and spoke to them personally. And I said, I'd just like to get to know you and know who you are and what you stand for and what you care about. And that's the beginning of building relationships. That 
process took time. At first, people were suspicious, especially in the other party. They're like, who is this guy? And ultimately, they, they realized it's time and trust and reputation that all I cared about was making good policy. And, and that's what government kind of should be. Uh, not necessarily the flashiest person, but a workhorse who's, who's willing to go down there, hustle, listen to people, and actually make things happen. So we've had a Republican legislature for the last five years. Um, I'm a Democrat, but I have had more bills signed into law than any member of my party in over a decade. And that's 12 bills that are not just license plate bills, but these were real policy wins for the people of Arizona. And, and a lot of these bills came directly from constituents that I met, you know, people who said there's a problem here, let's solve this problem, and I worked with people to get those things done. Um, those are just the bills in my name. We had a tons of bills that I don't think should have seen the light of day, and we made sure of that. Um, and, and of course, I'm the only physician in the legislature at this point. So a lot of this is the ability to also talk to my fellow legislators, and, and I think Joan appreciates me the absolute most for exactly this point, is talking to them about what you guys all do, what, what biosciences are, being factual, not rhetorical about these kinds of issues, and, and this really resonates. So yes, I, I do have a lot of friends across the aisle who, who actually trust me and work with me and, and, and I've been able to do this. So nine bills through Doug Ducey, three through government, Governor Hobbs, and, and I'm really proud of that record. For that, I've won over a dozen awards, many of them from Joan Kerber Walker, but, but also from Really, a lot of healthcare organizations, also non-healthcare kind of stuff from all over the state, and, and I'm proud to say I'm also endorsed by 21 of my colleagues from across the state, um, and, and that's a that's a that's a fairly large number of people for my my current endeavor. So I, that's that's a little bit of, of what I've been up to over the last few years. I've, I've tried to sort of talk about burnout specifically as one big umbrella that that the healthcare sector is suffering from. We're losing workforce. Uh, Physicians are, aren't super happy. Nurses aren't super happy. I'm very close. The Arizona Medical Association, the Arizona Nurses Association, all of the healthcare organizations in the state, be, because I'm I'm trying to be your voice, their voice, right? Um, so it's it's a point of pride to me to represent our entire industry and to be a champion for it. And and so anyway, I I thank you for the opportunity to be here and introduce myself. And you know, on behalf of our patient community, we really want to thank you. So what a lot of you talked about today, right? The challenges of prior authorizations, the challenges of copay accumulators, the challenges of step therapy, the challenge that your biomarker test is not paid for. And those are the types of policies that Dr. Shaw has worked on at, during his time at the state legislature. And when he says that his voice is respected as the only physician, and, and at one time you did have another physician there. My first year. In years. the first year. Um, but at, as the sole physician voice of the legislature, he is the go-to person. So when I will go in and, um, Hopefully, I get an equal hearing at the legislature because I have a unique position in being the voice of our patients, our physicians, our hospitals, our health innovator companies. They're all part of AZ Bio. So when I go in, I'm pretty much Switzerland. They can ask me, what's, you know, how, what's the take from this perspective? or this perspective, or that perspective, and it's my job to, to be as open and honest about that. And they don't always agree. Um, Dr. Shaw has the same responsibility. He is the person that either side of the aisle will go to and say, okay, you know, is this really the deal? Is this really an issue? Um, you know, and, and then having to explain it to, to someone who medicine is not their first career choice and hasn't been exposed to the same things that you and I have been exposed to. How do you do that on a day-to-day -day basis and be so effective? Um, so it, it, it involves, a, a lot of it is the, the background, right? Is, is 
treating, first of all, build relationships. The, the best way to do that is to treat people with dignity and kindness and respect and patience <laughs> and, and listen to what they have to say, what perspective they came from. Uh, I, I think it's what, what I found when I first got down there was a culture of tribalism and groupthink and I, you know, people on one side of the aisle wouldn't talk to people on the other side of the aisle. A lot of people don't. I mean, you, I'll ask, ask some of the people down there, do you have one friend on the other side of the aisle? And they'll tell you they don't. And I guess I didn't really understand that. So full disclosure, my parents are big Republicans and my sister and I are Democrats. And you know, we have, we have nice Thanksgivings, right? <laughs> we, at the, I would say probably like a couple of years ago, we had, you know, and maybe, maybe more than a few years ago, we, we had a little more contentious uh, time of it. And we've learned to, to respect and understand one another. And if we can do that at our dinner table, I can't understand why I can't do that when I go to work with some level of professionalism. Really, I mean, this, this red jersey, blue jersey thing, it's gotta stop. I mean, it, it's, not, it's not helpful. And people, I think the voters and the people can recognize a lot of it. Um, nonetheless, so this, this is the background of, of, to answer your question. And, and then it's what I talked about is that you, you've got to know what you're talking about and then be able to be factual about all of it and not rhetorical. So if people think that you're coming at it from your own point of view and your agenda, they, they're less likely to then trust you on it, but you can separate those two out by saying, look, here are the facts, right? Here's why, here's, here's what I know, right, as far as how I see it, and here's my recommendation. Kind of like what we do in medicine anyway, right? And say, okay, look, here's, here's my, I'm gonna give you now my opinion, and I think you should vote this way, but you can take that or leave it, but here are the facts, and these are separate, we're having separate sort of conversations. So I think some of that really starts to build trust in the way you can, uh, influence, say, somebody's vote or decision making. So um, you alluded to, you know, kind of your next project, and you've been extremely successful in driving policy and good policy in a legislative body of 90 people, 60 in the House and 30 in the Senate. Um, now you set, you know, kind of a more aggressive goal. Um, so I'd like you to share what that goal is and then tell me how you think and how we can help you if you achieve that goal of doing the same thing when you're dealing with almost 500 people. Sure, certainly. So the, the goal <laughs> that she is subtly alluding to is that in April, on April 1st of this year, I announced my intention to run for United States Congress for Congressional District Number 1. So uh, we've been in the race for about six months now, and um, <clears throat> it's going great. We've, we've, you know, part of it is knocking on doors, which I mentioned. Part of it is raising money, um, which we've also done really well. And um, it, uh, why am I doing this? Because we are trying to take this very same approach, listening to people, getting to know them, build relationships, uh, including you know, the voters at large as well as people in groups like this, and, and then take their voices to the federal level. A lot more of healthcare policy happens at the federal level, and, and again, being my area of expertise, this I think is, is sort of missing up there, and I would really love to be somebody who makes the world a better place by, by advocating for us up there. Um, and um, it, it's, um, I, I don't know what it's like to work there because yes, there's 90 legislators here, there's 535 plus the president and the administration up there. So it's, good. it's, a, bigger, it's a bigger deal, it's a bigger stage, right? But my hope is that the same way in which I was able to build trust and relationships here, I can do the same thing up there and hopefully try to make meaningful, a bigger meaningful impact for the entire country. Because I think it's sorely needed at this time. And I agree. I think that if we put the needs of the patient first, and these are the lenses that AZ Bio uses when we look at policy. So the first lens is, is it good for patients? It has to pass that sniff test. The second is, is it good for the overall healthcare system, right? Is it good for patients 
And is it going to be done in such a way that we're not going to bankrupt everybody? And then the third is looking at our specific industry and, and what are the things that might be needed for our specific industry. But patients first, health to delivery second, industry third. And what we found is if you have those very clear lenses in your advocacy, whether you are an elected leader or someone representing a community or the advocate that's knocking on the door to speak to the elected leader, Know what your lens is. What is your perspective that you're going to be talking about? Be factual, be honest, be willing to share. But most importantly, you just got to knock on the door and show up. And this is a prime example of what happens when you do. Would you please join me in thanking Dr. Shaw?